This is a demonstration of the general integration of assets into Unode. So some Unity knowledge is expected and this isn't necessarily a tutorial to directly follow but instead a point of reference or a guide. For this I'll be using Rewired and Easy Save to move this sphere and save and load its location after you've restarted the scene or restarted the game. For most assets, you'll be able to use scripts you find from their example files together with you know, C Sharp Parser to identify how you can actually make the graph in Unode. So for example, I actually took this script snippet from the documentation of Rewired, which I'll link to in the video, to create this graph that I could look at and go, okay, this is how it looks like in the graph. Now, how do I recreate that for my own characters and my own controls that I want? With that in mind, let's create our own character using what we found out from this graph. So let's see, we need a player ID and a player object. And you can see that we need the rewired namespace. So we'll make, we'll add the rewired namespace that we need. The player ID. And then the player. And then we can use, so here they actually set up the player in the awake method. So we'll just add awake and paste that here. And then make sure to change these so they're actually referencing our variables and not the new variables that you get when you pay something from another graph. And even though all of this is set up in awake here, we're going to make it slightly different as you know an example of how you can change what you're taking from these graphs that you've converted into how you might need to integrate them into your project. So we are going to instead set up these input event delegates into the unenable and undisable functions so that if the player is disabled, then they won't be querying for their input. So we'll add enabled and disabled. And we can look back using this reference that is player dot add input event delegate. Then we'll add the to the player the input event delegate. And we want the event type to be axis. So it will only be active while you're actually moving the object with the control. And to get this synonymous function here, we can right click and assign to anonymous function. And then we need the function for it to actually work on. And we are going to make this uh, moving. And so what we could do is drag this here because we've actually got this reference, we can see that there's something missing here. This on input, on input update has input action event data. That is a property in the uh, perimeter in here. So we can go back and then go, okay, I know, thanks to the reference we made, we are missing an input event data.
And now, we have what we need for our delegate. And we will be doing a similar thing for uh, restarting the scene, except we will be having a button just pressed. And we will actually be changing this to a curatine so that we can have it delayed for a moment. So you're not enabled. We'll be starting the curatine instead. Like this, we still need the data into there. And here, we now need the names of these actions. And so if you're familiar with Rewide, I've set up in here. It basically just, you can easily get this from the introduction in the documentation. Moving horizontal the left and right, and restarting. So here we need move horizontal, and here we need restart. And then in on disable, we just remove these delegates, which is very simple. Sim player, remove, and you only need the callback that's being referenced. So let's get rid of moving. And then rid of restart. With the player now receiving their input, Let's actually make them move. If you'll see the reference that we have from our past script, the, you can get the access from the data in the parameters. So moving the data we set up, we can get the axis. Now let's multiply our horizontal input by a speed. So we'll just add a float for speed. We'll just set that at 10. And multiply that. But let's also multiply it by delta time. So that it's not frame rate dependent. And then let's get a reference to our actual character. This is transform so that we can translate that by the uh, by the axis that it's receiving. Just put that in the X. And we've got simple movement. Next, we are going to set up our scene restarting, which won't be saving our position until we add the easy save. Because it's going to restart so quickly, we're just going to change our local scale so that you can see when it's restarting the scene. Wait for half a second. And then we'll just load the scene again. And for this, we are going to need to add the scene management namespace. So we'll load the scene, the string name, 
that we will get from the active scene. And then we just need a return for this coroutine. Now, if we save this and attach it to our sphere, making sure to reference it so that it moves properly. When we currently uh, move the sphere and we restart the scene, you can see that its position is reset. So we're going to now integrate a new asset, the easy save. I'll also link to the relevant documentation of Easy Save in the description, but this was a much easier example of integration than Rewired was. I didn't need to have a reference graph like this be passed or anything. And Easy Save doesn't actually need its namespace added. We can just go Yes, three, and here we are going to save a value once we restart the scene so that you will be able to load its location. And this is going to be a float because all we're doing is moving our horizontal position. And for this, we just need to get the current x position to save. What we are going to do then in our awake we are going to test if a key exists in easy save called some tool position and that is going to then let us set the position of our object to said x location on load if it finds it. What we need to do is get the constructor for this then in the X, we'll be loading, just like we saved, a value based on the string key of type float. Our horizontal position. Now, if we save this, we can then press play and note that after we restart now, our position is saved. And that also happens when we play the scene because we're using easy save. And that saves through closing and opening the project again, the game again. And that is two different examples of how you might go about trying to integrate assets into, you know, a lot of it is just finding the right documentation, trying to pass scripts you can, trying to pass documentation you can. And I hope that helps you integrate all the different assets you might be wanting to use with your project in Unode.